Hello and welcome to this week's show where we'll be focusing on the FA Community Shield at Wembley Stadium, the Women's FA Cup Final at Wembley, the first to be played at the National Stadium and also look ahead to the new season where we'll be asking the question, should there be a referee Super League across Europe? With me in the studio are Mark Holsey, former Premier League referee, and Brian Dean, former Premier League player, who scored the opening goal of the inaugural Premier League season back in 1992. It'll always go down in, in the record books. Um, Community Shield, first of all, and I'll come to you, Mark, because you referee the Community Shield, I think 2007, fairly big game, Chelsea, Manchester United. Anthony Taylor was in charge for this one. Um, was he the right choice for you? I mean, he refereed the League Cup final last season. Yeah, I think uh, he was the right person, made the right choice. He had a, yeah, I think he had a, a good season last season, refereed some notable derbies, the, the North East derby, the, the Merseyside derby, and, and done very well. And I think he's kicked the season off for the select group referees. You know, good start for him. They so it continues. How difficult a game is it? Clearly, in terms of a trophy, it's not got the prestige of the FA Cup final. Yeah. But it is the start of the season. It's the one thing everybody looks to, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I think the players can take credit as well because I thought they behaved themselves very well. The sportsmanship was, was, was good. But it's interesting because before you go out, when I refereed the Community Shield, the, you know, the, the, the powers be come out and say, we don't want too many cautions today because it's a, it's a Community Shield. The cautions don't count anyway. So if a player gets cautioned, it don't count towards their tally up. So, but as I say, it was, it was a good um, showcase yesterday. And I thought, as I say, the, the teams and... And, and the referees team done well. It wasn't that lively a fixture. We thought it might be Brian, didn't we? Chelsea, Arsenal, Mourinho, Wenger. Yeah. Well, I think first of all, most of the um, game was played out the week before between the two managers, wasn't it? There was a lot of talk with them two disliking each other and all of this. But I think um, it's a measure of how well the referee did and his and his assistance by the fact that the game flowed quite well. You know, it, there wasn't any real incidents right. and. Um, it's good to see. He kept his cards in his pocket. He managed the game, managed the situation, as, as, as Brian said. He you know, let the game flow. There's some great advantages. You know, he, wasn't, he wasn't fussy. You know, I mean, you know, stopping the game here, stopping the game there. There was a couple of challenges going in. Could have got the card out a bit earlier. But as I say, he managed the game. And as I say, I thought he'd done very well. You think that he's got to manage the pitch, but clearly now we know that a lot more goes on off the pitch. Knowing the Mourinho-Wenger history, I guess that would have been in the back of his mind and the fourth official's mind. Yeah, I don't think the players worry too much about that, do they, do they Brian? That's, that's for them to get on, let them get on with their, what they want at their verbals. It's a bit of a sideshow, really, yeah. but uh, I mean, we know that from the personalities involved. So, uh, you know, I think the, the players, are, they don't get involved and fueled up. But, but the managers have got an example to set. And, um, you know, what, what they, the way they behave in the tech era goes on to the field to play and then obviously all the, the spectators and all the media like yourselves and it's just a bit disappointing that the, you know, at the end of the game there's the sportsmanship as I say they've got a second example there was, there was no handshake and you know I think you know they've got to sort of I don't know, grow up a little bit they? yeah I agree, you know, I agree. Does, in, a, in a way does the fourth official being there actually almost cause more trouble for the officials because they've got somebody to have a go at as well and then that person's in the middle all the time. Oh, that's right. When, when, when the referee's not having a good, a good game out in the middle, the managers come straight at you and vent their anger at you. Why are you out there? What are you doing? What's he done this? Why has he done that? So sometimes the fourth official is very, very difficult for him to, you know, to, to control and um, try and try. You know, you try and use common sense. You try and just use your common sense there and say managing the two managers. Yeah, is I, too I actually think in, in this country, because I was in Norway for two years managing there and I actually think that the uh, fourth officials here are quite placid, yeah. you know, because, placid. yeah, absolutely, um, you know, they seem to, you know, they, they act more like a referee between the two, but they keep the situation yeah. quite calm. Do, yeah. I, I've been out there and if decisions have gone against myself or the opposition in their box, you know, they're quite strict. You know, they do. They, they, it's more of a finger pointing. Officious, more officious. Yeah. Officious, yeah. Whereas, Definitely. Whereas we try to sort of manage the situation because you know, as a referee on a select group, if if you're managing or full official with those Premier League managers, and all of a sudden you get one of them shifted upstairs, and you know you ain't going to be refereeing that team for a, for a number of weeks, you know, months. You so know. contrasted between the two, you think it works here. I do. I do. I've watched games and, and I've kept an eye on the technical areas. And, and you know, it's, it's, it seems to be quite a good relationship, I think, generally. I mean, you do get, you know, you do get some comments, you do get some few choice words, you know, at you. But you just, let's say, you just manage it and, and get on with it. Has he set the tone 
for the new season, Anthony Taylor? Has, has he laid down a marker in, in refereeing terms? I know it wasn't necessarily that controversial. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you, 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 know, it's, it's, you can only referee what's in front of you. And, and as I say, he managed the game, he managed the situation, managed the players, let the game flow. But as I say, there wasn't a lot of big key match decisions to make. So as I say, it's, as I, it, I wouldn't say it's easy for him, it's the way the referee handles the game. As I say, his accuracy and decision making was very good. But there wasn't, some, there wasn't big decisions for him to make, was there? So, you know, it all starts properly next weekend and we'll see what happens next weekend. Well, we'll go into that in more detail in part two. Uh, I want to move on to the Women's FA Cup final at Wembley for the first time. So that on a big, on a big stage the day before the Community Shield. Refereed by Amy Fern, who's well known yeah. um, in women's football and in men's football because she was the first woman to referee a men's professional game. Yeah, I think she came on as a, um, as a replacement, didn't she, for an injury. But um, yeah, it's good to see that the women's final was played at Wembley, and quite rightly so. As I say, we've, we've just seen the, the Women's World Cup, and it's been fantastic. It's been hugely supported and, you know, covered by the BBC TV, which has been, been very good. Um, I just have, you know, we, we look at women, we look at um, women referees. Are they, are they good enough to step up into, into the man's, into the professional game? Listen, if they're good enough, why not? My only reservation is, is their fitness. Um, you know, because they're stepping up into into the national list, the select group, and they've got to do the same fitness tests as as the men, um, and that's I think where they just they just struggle with 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 the fitness tests of, of, of the men. I, I think I think they'll be under a lot more scrutiny, yeah. and and I think because of that, you know, they're probably in a being a more pressurised situation than a, than a male, um, so they're going to have to be. In Premier League terms, you mean, if, if they, that because obviously we've yeah. not had a, a women referee, woman referee in a Premier League match. But I, but I almost think they're going to have to be better. Yeah. You know, they're going to be, they're, you know, everything will be scrutinised yeah. because that's that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Well, I mean, as you say, I, I... surely, surely though, gender doesn't determine your your judgment. No, no, no. I think there's, there's still, yeah. I, I, listen, there's some there's some great women referees out there. Some great women assistant referees out there, and. And for me, I mean, we've, we've seen already this season that um, one of the, the, the girls, I think it's um, Sarah Garrett on the National List assistant, she's failed a fitness test. And, um, you know, uh, and, and that, is, that, is, that is a problem. Sean Massey, she regularly failed a fitness test and, and understand she's done it behind closed doors. So, so for me, you know, with, with the men, they've got to do, you know, next season, it's even going to get harder with their sprints. You know, they've got to do six sprints, six 40 metre sprints at 5.9. So they've got to get home in 5.9. They have to do 20, 150 metre runs um, in 30 seconds with 30 seconds rest. Now that's that's going to come down all the time. So it's very difficult for for the women. I mean, you know how hard that is for, for you know to to run. So it, my only concern is, is, is well, that's right. <laughs> is, is, is their fitness? Well, if you haven't got those fitness levels, the first thing to go is your concentration levels. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, yeah. and then Toughness. and then you talk, yeah. yeah, and then you're talking about decision making. Yeah. Yeah. See, with, with the fitness, as, as Brian's seen, it says it's your mental toughness, your mental strength, you know, and it, and it's getting into positions, getting yourself into into viewing angles, and it's and it's the fitness that gets you there. Yeah. So, are you suggesting then that we're we're actually getting further away from the possibility of having a female referee in the middle than we might be getting closer to it? Because it's five years since she came on, Amy, and refereed that game. If they can overcome that fitness. Barrier, which obviously, as I say, you know, for the lady, for the girls, for the fitness test, it's not as hard as the men's. But once you step up into that men's uh, domain, you've got to do the same fitness test as the guys do. You know, so they have to do it, and I think that's where their, their downfall and will be. That, and that alludes back to what I was yeah. saying about, yeah. you know, they're going to be under so much more scrutiny mm. as well. So. Yeah. I'd love to see. I'd love to see it happen. I'd you don't think players necessarily would, would take advantage and try and intimidate a female yeah. referee more? Well, no. It's just, I mean, once you, once, I mean, it's, it's okay. Yeah, once you're coming up through the non-leagues and the leagues, it, it most probably it's a, it's a, it is a bit of a novelty, and 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 the, the players ain't the same towards the women referees. They are towards the the the, the fellas. But when you step up, step up into that professional level. You're just you're just the referee. You're 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 in black. You're you're a, you, you know you're in that man, man or woman in, in authority, and it's exactly the same. If and if they're not happy with you, they tell you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys, for now. Um, we'll be back in part two, where we're going to discuss in detail the new Premier League season and the select group of referees who'll be heading up the officiating during the season. We'll be back shortly.